<laughs> Woo! Somebody's not on his medication. But ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about being unhinged. You know, I'm a Saints Row enjoyer. I played Saints Row 2. I think that's the last Saints Row game that I consider to be a pretty good title. I know that some people say Saints Row has always been a mid-franchise, and that's that's kind of true. Saints Row 3 and 4, nothing special to me. Uh, Saints Row 2, absolutely a banger experience. I like it. It's a story about rags to riches, going from the lowly street gang all the way to buying every single property, doing every single activity, whether that be racing, whether that be spewing feces on people, whether that be committing insurance fraud, you get the drift, okay? It's a game franchise that favors the wacky and zany nature, within reason. You know, when GTA 4 is all realistic, and broody about the American dream, Saints Row is all there about spewing literal feces all over the walls. I mean, it's a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, obviously. Now, let's get talking about the reboot. Obviously, Saints Row got rebooted. A few days ago, it came out, and I bought the game. I bought it because I didn't want to make this video and people saying, Matt Muya, you haven't even played it. Oh, I played it. Oh, I played halfway through it. No, I didn't finish the game because uh, I understand, you know, self-care is a very important virtue we teach people today. And I care too much about my mental mental well-being to keep playing this dog water open world soulless experience now before anybody goes but Muna, i'm enjoying the game too listen okay there's people who enjoy having sex with pencil sharpeners okay there's people who love that doesn't make it not an objectively fun experience okay having a relationship with a pencil sharpener hurts it's not healthy okay when I was young, I flipped dog turds on the street, okay? I thought that was fun. I thought that was a banging time. I thought the world could never get any better. Doesn't make flipping dog turds an amazing, objectively good experience. Yes, you can like bad experiences. I'm sure there's some people that just fucking love Left Alive on the PlayStation and PC. Doesn't make Left Alive a good game. That game still sucks. You can like Saints Row 2022. That doesn't mean the game doesn't have faults. Now, there's people online who are like, oh, this game's as buggy as Cyberpunk 2077 at launch. Also false. Saints Row at least has a functional law enforcement system, okay? So you got to get some credit where credit's due. Now, Saints Row 2022 is a subject of a lot of failures. One of them is bad and terrible writing. Look, I'm not here to go, oh, the original characters were so much better. Look, these games are a product of their time, okay? I'm sure if you load up Saints Row 2, it's a pretty dated experience. But it's an experience where there's at least funny cutscenes. Mr. Gat, you've been convicted of over 300 murders. Do you really expect this appeal to work? I figure with the statute of limitations, it really should be closer to 250. There's no statute of limitations for murder. Why the fuck not? Watch yourself, Mr. Gat. Or what? You hold me in contempt of court? You're already planning on giving me the chair? You think I'd give a shit about you not liking me? Fuck off. The characters can be relatively well written, okay? Johnny Gat, Shondi, you know, Pierce, a lot of those, Kenzie Washington from Saints Row 3 and 4, absolutely fun characters, memorable even. When I was playing Saints Row 2022, this is a game where I feel like the writing staff was either artificial intelligence or completely out of touch boomers that were writing people of the millennial era, and, you know, my my age group, or, or Zoomers, okay? You know, the amount of times I see, literally in the first hour of the game, you start off as hardened criminals. I mean, your main character, the boss of this game, the player, you know, he basically, uh, or she, I guess you can be anybody, whatever in between, you can create a character, the character creator is pretty good, I'll give it that, all right, you can make a lot of wild shit, I made Bob Ross, Golden Bob Ross, Bronze Bob Ross, uh, and uh, that was kind of cool, but your main character starts off basically serving in a private military contracting group, Marshall, doing a pretty bang up job, by the way, they're clearly well versed. Um, obviously, the other friends that they have are, you know, hard criminals in their own right. You know what their biggest problem is in the beginning? How are we going to pay rent? As they rob a payday loans place stacking bills. Oh, you're worried about rent? Oh, don't forget, I got to pay off my student loans. You know, the way that the story is written and presented makes it sound like a sitcom or like, you know, what a boomer's interpretation of a millennial's life is. What sort of waffle maker can I get for 35 bucks? Uh, presumably one that makes fucking waffles. Mm -hmm. hey! <laughs> hey, the wage slave is back. How was your first day? Were the other mercenaries nice to you? You know, as far as hired killers go, I'd give him a seven. You look like you could use a mugmosa. Thanks, Eli. 
Seriously, how's the job? Eh, it's the murder business. The fundamentals don't change, just the uniform. Uh, I can tell you love it. <laughs> okay, I don't have to love it. I have to pay my student loans. Phew, <laughs> I'm in. So I'm guessing that means the pay's good. Uh, it's supposed to be. Got stiffed on my bonus today. Dude, what the fuck? Oh, I played a little fast and loose on the job and, uh, well, my CO wasn't a fan. You gotta be kidding me. Swear to God, this lady walked right off the set of an 80s action movie. I was half expecting her to call me Rook and threaten to take my badge. Are we gonna make rent? We'll make rent. We just gotta be a little more creative. You know, these are supposed to be hardened criminals, guys, okay? They're not supposed to be ha-ha, goofy, eye-funny, watermark characters. There's literally almost no depth to any of these characters, too. It's like you attached a stereotype to each and every single one of them and just rolled with it for, I guess, the majority of the game, because halfway into it, nothing's changed. You know, this isn't quirky like Watch Dogs 2, where the characters were kind of like, you know, cringy at the beginning, but they grew onto you later on. You started to like Satara, Wrench, you know, a lot of those characters later on, okay, as the story progressed. Saints Row, you don't get that, okay? These characters are boring, bland all the way through. There is writing moments where, like, literally, I guess the developers thought it was funny in the beginning where, like, your character just went, fuck, <laughs> swear word here, angry, all right? Wild shit like that, <laughs> truly hilarious. The writing in this, it, it, trust me, if you thought Borderlands was like the pinnacle of writing, like if you thought Borderlands was deep and shit, you're gonna love Saints Row, okay? This is like written for you. Now, graphically, the game is nothing special. It's kind of like if you took, uh, you know, some fan Unreal Engine product, uh, project and just threw it onto a system. There are so many visual problems that I have with this game. Like, as I'm driving my car through the streets, literally in front of me, things are phasing in. Like, the goddamn dimensional merge is happening, okay? Sonic is gonna pop up into the game, okay? The dimensional merge is... This is some old-school design that's leaking its way into a 2022 video game. You know, visually speaking, uh, mechanically speaking, the game is not anywhere different than Saints Row 3 even. I am almost convinced this is the same goddamn engine with a new coat of paint attached to it. You know, some updates visually, of course. For the most part, the game does not visually entice me. It's not a visually good looking game. At best, it looks like a Fortnite creative map, if anything. But of course, visuals and story aren't everything. Muda, what about the gameplay? This is where the soulless shit really kicks in. You know, if I compare this to, let's say, Saints Row 2, for instance, a game released 2008, last I checked? You know what I could do in Saints Row 2, a crime game? I could walk into a store, pull a gun up to somebody, and, and, and hold them up. I could go to the back of the store, grab the money in their safe, initiate a police chase, and run away from a 2008 game, no less. I could even do that in GTA Vice City if I wanted to. Walk into any store, point a gun, and boom, I could get away with money. You know what I can't do in 2022 Saints Row self-made criminals? Go to a store, point a gun at a criminal, point a gun at the teller, and steal from them. Now you might be like, that's not a big deal. Is that really what's stopping you? Um, if you're going to make an open world game, maybe try having some level of interactability. No, instead in Saints Row 2022, you can shoot the person right square in the fucking face and then buy a shirt from them right after. Makes sense, right? Makes a whole lot of sense there. Now, what about the various activities, Muda? There's a few of them out there. Absolutely. You know, as a Saints Row game should. The majority of this game lies upon you buying ventures and then doing venture missions which are also repetitive and boring. There are some fun ones, like Insurance Fraud, because that's one of the cool, enjoyable mini-games. But then there's other ones like, hey, here's a car factory, here's a car chop shop we're doing. What are your missions? Go there, steal a car, bring it back. Okay. Oh, here's a food truck uh, drug mission. Okay, here's a venture you're going at. What's your mission type? Go there, steal a truck, bring it right back. You think it changes from there? Hell no! This shit is repetitive as hell! This shit is a sweatshop of open world gaming! Alright, none of it is fun! None of it is enjoyable! Like, just to give you a point on, like, interactability, they literally built, like, a fictionalized version of, like, the Las Vegas Strip with all the casinos. Except you can't even go into them and gamble. Like, you could do that in San Andreas, a game over 15 years ago at this point. And you can't even do it in a game in 2022. It's like they built this open world, but it just serves as a goddamn level selector. 
All right, what you're playing over here, it reminds me wholeheartedly of the fact that an open world game has not truly evolved. You know, back when the PS4 came out, there were some genuinely cool open world concepts. Like, I remember when Shadow of Mordor came out, they had the whole Nemesis system. That was kind of cool. You know when games like Watch Dogs 2 comes out and you could literally hack other users in other NPCs and swat them call up like high profile criminals to target them create three way turf battles as you sneak through the chaos and do your actual objective that's kind of cool that was pretty interesting games like Grand Theft Auto 5 that are still leagues and generations of world simulation ahead of a 2022 open world game is baffling this game visually mechanically and from a gameplay perspective feels like it's stuck in 2013 saints row 3 era i would wager saints row 3 has a much better world simulation than even saints row 2022 this is literally a ubisoft gamers wet dream have a bunch of points on the map the open world is effectively just a level selection screen go crazy that's all the game is that's pretty much the open world experience right off the bat this is without a doubt one of the most like filthiest open world experiences that I've actually gotten into. Sure, can you play it? Yeah, absolutely. Is it a serviceable game? Absolutely. But if you're wondering why the reviews for this are down across the board, it's because this game does nothing to invent the open world and better it in any capacity. Not only has the Saints Row game not expanded mechanically from the previous titles whatsoever, because let me tell you something right now, if you put up Saints Row 3 right next to Saints Row 2022, gameplay-wise, Nothing has advanced. No lessons have been learned. But now if you put it up from a writing perspective and a story perspective and a world perspective, this game is somehow even worse than those previous titles. And remember, Saints Row started to fall off considerably after 2. 3 and 4 were f okay games. But this game puts those and makes them look like fucking GTA 4 in comparison, okay, story-wise. This game has some of the most bland, soulless characters, some of the most bland, soulless open world shit I've ever seen. And it refuses to evolve itself at all from a gameplay perspective to the modern era. There is nothing in this open world that screams, hey, this is running on the power of the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 or the appropriate competitor consoles. Nothing in this game screams that whatsoever. In fact, if anything, we've lost features from the Saints Row franchise in Saints Row 2022. So yeah, I'm going to say this game is a soulless, bland game in every capacity, and I would never, ever recommend this dog shit to anybody. That's pretty much where I stand. And, uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed in Volition for even thinking that this game could bring about a good, uh, you know, f entry into the franchise. This game is going to be the reason why Volition, whoever is involved into this Embracer, are going to say, nobody cares about Saints Row, guys. <laughs> See, we told you. Nobody's buying it. The reviews are all bad. That's because you didn't care about Saints Row. It's not the fans' fault for not buying this dog crap. Obviously, they're not going to do it. It is the game developers and publishers fault for creating a inferior experience in the Saints Row franchise. Look, I was kind of excited about this game, Saints Row after all this time, and hey, I've enjoyed playing a Saints Row game. But you all have made Ubisoft, you've outdone Ubisoft. You've actually made a more worse checklist open world game than Ubisoft's worst titles to, to, to come. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a feat of itself. Congratulations for making one of the most uninspired open world experiences, Volition. Good job, congratulations. Honest to God, if there was an award at the Game Awards for that shit, you've already secured it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and Saints Row has disappointed me. I'm out, dude. I'm done.